Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I just got here, first cast, and we're already doubled up. That's the kind of day it's going to be. Stay tuned. We're getting on the mud cats. So let's talk gear for a second here. Um, I'm putting some worms on. This is what I am using for fishing catfish is worms and a, a pre-made prick roll rig that I bought from Canadian Tire. They're like three dollars I think for like a set of two or something. I'm putting on a full worm. Uh, if I was to give you guys a tip about these pick roll rigs is I would definitely change the hooks. They bend very easily. So if you're fishing a high snag area, it's perfect. You can pull your hooks out and not lose your rig. But if you're fishing an area where you can catch some good fish, change these hooks. They bend very, very easily. I'm just fishing little mud cats, so these hooks will uh, do the job. So I put a full worm on. There's two of them on this pickerel rig. And I have uh, like an ounce weight at the bottom. The rod that I'm using is a Shakespeare Ugly Stick. This one here is a seven foot medium. It's got a really awesome light tip and not bad reel for the combo that it came with. Again, another Canadian Tire Special. I love my Canadian Tire Specials, rod and reel combos. I use and abuse them real, really bad, having kids and throwing them in and out of cars. Ugly Stick, definitely one of those that you would want to pick up if you are hard on your gear. Okay, so I got this nice little basin in front of me that runs into a nice little runoff back there. What I'm doing, I'm casting out probably about 30 or 40 yards. Let it sink to the bottom. Reel up the slack a little bit. And then watch the tip bounce for the bite. So what I like to do, since I'm fishing with the pickerel rig, is I'll cast... I'll tighten up and then I'll loosen up a little bit so that I have a little bit of bow in the line. So that way if they bite and they pick it up, they just leave with it and they don't feel the tension until they actually got the end of the line. So with that bow and that little short leader that's on the side of the pickerel rig, that should be money for them to get enough slack to go and bite. See now my rod's bouncing, I'm getting some good bites. I'll reel up. He's there. And fish on. Another little fish. They're biting good this morning. Got here a little bit past 8 o'clock. And the fish are here and they are biting. Here we go. Nice little cat. This one's not a keeper, very small. Now with these cats, they have quills on them and they hurt. Now you noticed how I grabbed them from the belly backwards. I got the two quills in, on either side of my hand. There's another nice big one there, he's trying to hurt me. But this little uh, mud cat's gonna go back. Boom. Fish on. Fight hard for a little fish. They're pretty fun. Like if you want to go out fishing with the family, this would probably be one of the species that I would suggest. These little mud cats. There's lots of them. Buy lots of worms, come out with the kids. Great fun.
This one's for the bucket. It's a good size one, actually. He swallowed that hook. Got my bucket back here. In the shade, keep those nice and cool. That sucks. I just did a whole skit without my GoPro rolling. It froze on me. I just caught the biggest cat of the day. But what I was saying is the springtime is the best time to go out and catch these guys. They definitely bite hard because they're spawning right now. So they're on the feed and you can catch a lot of catfish. Sorry, I saw, I keep calling it catfish. It is a catfish, but it's a mud cat. I feel like I got two of them on the line right now. I don't know, it's just another big cat. Oh, I got two on the line, guys. This is my second double header of the day. Oh, man. With two big size cats. This is the biggest one of the day again. So that means the big ones are starting to roll in now, which is a good sign. Because that means I can get a good feed of these guys. Alright, so I don't have the take, but we're doubled up. Luke's got a fish over there and I got a carp here on the fly rod. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Good fish, good fish. Running towards me. This is awesome guys, I'm fishing with my eight weight right now. This is my uh, G Loomis. Basically, I'm stalking carp that are coming in close. First one of the day on the on the fly rod. Put him away from shore. Muscle him a little bit here. Right now is that 30 and that 10. Yeah. Plus the, that DF rig there. Get in there! See that nut job, buddy? Boom! All right, this is redemption. Since uh, I only put one fish bank side last time, Luke's like, man, you gotta try it again. And obviously, it worked. All right, give you guys a nice look. First carp of the day. Awesome. Let's get a good release on them. Thank you, carp gods. Okay, so that's it for the fishing. Uh, it was freaking awesome. Caught a bunch of mud pout. And uh, obviously a little bonus uh, clip here for uh, on the fly rod with the uh, carp. Uh, let's get over to the house. Let's get the cooking. So if you guys want to see that, you got to stay with me. All right, I'm back at the house. It's late. So what I'm going to do is I'm cleaning these up right now and I'll prep them and I'll cook them tomorrow for you guys. So I got a bunch of them done already at practice. I'm gonna do a couple here for you guys. I am no way near a professional for this because I is just, this is my first attempt at this. So you guys are along on the journey of me catching a mud pelt for the first time, cleaning them for the first time and tasting them for the first time. So what I was showing is a cut along the back here Kind of like in a V shape. 
and go along his back dorsal here a little bit further. Do the same thing on this side. Now I know I'm going over a lot. My knife is dull right now. Then you go all the way around them. So the reason I'm cutting them up like this is because I'm going to pull his skin all the way off. So that little V-notch helps and you got your in those pliers, grab the corner, start pulling. I pull about midway, go to the other side, start the other side. Pull down. I'm just gonna finish the rest of them all the way down to the end. And then the last thing. Rip his head off. Get out the rest of his guts. Clean them out as best you can. Now I do know some people take the uh, quills off on the back. You can snip them off, or uh, when you're cooking, when you're getting uh, when you're getting close to being cooked, you can pull these right out. All right, that's what it looks like. It's not the prettiest, it's my first time, so please don't criticize me, but I can't wait to taste these guys now. Okay, so if you're still with me, give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys holding out till here. Time to get cooking. Let's make some fish. All right, so here's my ingredients. I'm keeping it very simple. I'm gonna deep fry it. I'm gonna fry them up. I've had uh, this in some really, really cold water to try and get most of the blood off. I'm going to need some eggs for the egg wash, some flour, panko, salt and pepper, and that's it. We're keeping it simple. I'm outside. Keep this tank outside instead of in the house. Let's get to cooking and I'll show you the process of how I do this. What you do, bring the flour first, give it a little shake. Shake off the access. Put it in an egg bath. Now I had four eggs here. You're gonna have to gauge how many eggs you need. That's one of those things where you're gonna have to figure out on your own. Whew. All right, out of the egg wash, shake off the excess. And into the pan coat. If you want an extra crispy batch, once you take it out of your pan coat, dip it back in the eggs, put it back in the pan coat, extra crisp. This time I'm gonna keep it simple. And well, now I'm stuck in the rain. Now I'm over here cook cooking. And I got two that are pretty golden brown. I'm going to take them off. We'll do a taste test here shortly. Riley, is it good? Yeah. <laughs> so you've just seen it's Riley approved. Now it's my turn. It's good. It's fried, so in oil, so it's good. But it's got a little bit of a fishy taste to it. And the texture is like, not rubbery, but mushy. Compared to normal fish, it flakes off. Now, if there's some viewers that have 
just for these and have cooked them drop a comment below let me know what kind of ingredients you used when you cooked it i've seen people using milk and all kinds of different things and um, i just did the egg wash and flour panko it's try tested true it's the best all right that's the end of the video um if i were to rate this fish uh one out of ten i would give it a seven out of ten um the reason i give it a seven out of ten is just the texture and the taste a little bit too fishy a little bit too mushy for me catfish it looks like cat food almost as my wife mentioned so um maybe we might not do another catch and cook unless you guys drop a bunch of comments below and like like this video 25 times maybe i might do another one for you guys if not hope you guys enjoyed hit that subscribe button that like button i'll catch you guys in the next upload